and hello everyone welcome back to another Lua tutorial in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at tables so if you're coming from another programming language tables are usually considered lists arrays sets dictionaries objects records queues a bunch of these things can all fit into the idea of a table. A table can be all of these. If you have no idea what I just said, then you don't have to worry about that. So let's create our first table. I'm going to say local TBL. And if I at any point say list or array, just know I'm referring to a table. And this table will be used with these right here. So these brackets. Anything that goes in here is part of the table. This can contain any types and any amount of items. So this, and we can put a 2, and a 9.9, .9 and a true. All of these, they're allowed. Booleans numbers, strings, even other tables. So we can go here and say, okay, cool. This is all allowed. If we were to try and print out table, then take note that you might not get what you expect. Usually when you print out something like this, you expect to receive that back. But in this case, we will receive a memory address. But if you want to get the items inside of a table, you could use a for loop. So for i is, oh, that's all caps. For i is equal to one to hashtag tbl do. And hashtag is just a short version of number of items in this table. Like if you have a string or a piece of text and you do this hashtag with it, as you might remember, we receive the length of that string. The same concept exists for tables. And in here we can say table and then pass in i. If we do this, we'll get each item inside of the table. A this, two, 9.9, .9, true, and then another table because this is a table here. So we'll have to for through that as well if we want to see the items in it. Now you might be wondering, how does this work? How can we do that? Well, if we go look here and we say print TBL at index one, and this is called an index, and we run it, we'll get this. This right here is the first index. So if we were to go like this, We'll get index one, which is this, index two, index three, index four, index five. And the more you add, of course, the more indexes there will be. So it starts from one and currently it has up until five. If we go five, then we'll get a table. If we say five, one, then we'll get okay, because here we're saying Okay, go to this fifth index here. And then in this fifth index, return the item at index one of it. So this would be one. And this here would be index two of this table. We'll cover this a little bit more in a second, but this is just as an example. If I were to say four, we'll get true. If I were to give a value that doesn't exist, like nine, we'll get nil. Nil just means empty, doesn't exist, nothing. Now usually, you'd actually create a table with the same data types. It's not too often that you'll see tables using different data types, unless you use it in a sense of an object, which we'll get to a little bit later. But when you just use it as an array, so a way to store multiple values inside of one variable, 
then you'll usually just use the same data type, so just numbers or just text. For example, let's say we have local x. Well, let's actually start at a. a, b, c, d, e. And you can imagine this going up until z. And we could say we're storing one, two, three, four, five. Now you might already be seeing how this is not really very practical. Because it's fine to have a bunch of variables lying around that are storing their own values, but all of these values are related in some way. But they're stored in their own variables. Which there's nothing wrong with this method. It's just there's a more comfortable way to do this, where we could go local alpha nums. And this will get all of the alphabetical numbers which we would have usually done by doing a and then a is equal to one, b, b is equal to two, c, and whatnot. But here we can create a table with one, two, three, four, five. This is the same, but instead of having to use a specific variable, so print a, we have already grouped them together and we can just say print alpha nums at index one. This will give us the same value because a and one is the same thing. If you want it, you could also put variables in here. You're not limited to just values because variables on the end of the day are just values. So this will still work perfectly fine. If I say index two where b lies, then we get two. If I were to remove this, then this will no longer work. So we'll get nil because b has never been defined. Now let's go here and say we have one, three, five, seven, nine. And we can just call this local nums. Then let's say we want to add another value into this table here. Let me just also for through each item. So one to the amount of nums. And here we can print nums at index i. If we run this, we'll get one, three, five, seven, nine. Now let's say I want to add one thing in here before we run that. We can say table dot insert and this will insert an item into an table. So first we specify the table, in this case nums. Or it, then you can either specify what you want to put in here or where you want to put it in. If you don't specify where, it's just going to put it at the end. So if I say 19 here, and I stop here, it will insert 19 at the end. So here, if we run it, we get 19. But if I instead in the middle put two, they will insert 19 at position two here. So if I run this, we'll get one nineteen three. So this here allows you to get a position you want to put it in. Without it, it will just append it to the end of this table. You can, of course, also remove. And here you pass in the position, not the value, but the position. So if I say one, one will no longer exist. If I say four, four will no longer exist. Because four was seven. There's also a nice special way you can loop through these tables which is other than this normal for loop. Instead of using hashtag nums, you can use pairs. So here we go, pairs, and you pass in nums. Now you can get K and V. So for K and then V in pairs num, if we were to print out K, we'll get these values. So one to five, this would be the index. So in this case, we could say index and V would be value. So index, we could actually just do index and then value and it will do work the same. So index one has one, index two has three, index three has five. So there's a nice way you can for through a table in case you don't want to for through the numbers. Maybe you want the index as well as the value. Well, you can get both, but in pairs, it's split.
It's up to you which you prefer doing. Now let's talk about multi-dimensional tables, also known as multi-dimensional arrays. This is a table inside of another table. For example, here we can create another table, one, eight, three. Okay, let's create a few more. This can have four, this can have seven, this can have five, this can have two, and in last we can have six and nine. Now if we were to print out nums, we'll get our table location in the RAM. If we were to print out num at index one, we'll get the location of the table in that table. If we specify another value in here, then we'll get the first index of the first item here. If we say two, we'll get eight. If we change this here to two, then we'll get two because this is index one of the first table. This is index two of the first table and this is index three. So this would be the first table. Now inside of it, you have index one of the first table in the first table or the first item in the first table and then index two and index three and then index three, two, one, and then one, two, three. If you were to pass in something like hashtag nums, you'll get the amount of tables in this first table. So if I were to copy this a few times, we'll get five. But if you specify an index here, for example, one, you'll get the length of the items here, three. So this is three, this is five. We can add more here, so now it will have a different length. If you want to display all of the values inside of this, then you can also use a for loop. So here you can go for i becomes one to the num or to the amount of tables in nums. And then for this time j, because we can't redeclare i, that won't be a good idea. For j becomes one to the amount of items instead of i, because i is a table. So we'll get the amount of items in i. So this would be i at each item inside of i would be, or each value here would be j. So this is i, this is j. So here we could print nums. So nums and then at index i and index i will give us the table. So we specify the next index, which would be j. Now, oh, and uh, my bad, this here is a number. It's not a table. We have to say nums at index i. My bad, because i is a number. Just like j is a number, it's not the actual value. If we run this, as you can see, we get 183, which is the first items. And then we get 426, which is the second. And then 5759, seven, which is the last. So if you're having a bit of trouble with this, just note nums at index and in the first index, which we can call x would be the first item or the second item, whatever X is here. If you add another one here, it will try and access the item inside of this item. So X, which is this, and we'll try to access Y inside of it. So let's say eight. If you have a table inside a table inside a table, you could also add your Z. So if I were to have a table here as well, and we can go two, four, five, and we can have a few more. Then I could do this. We have three attached to each other to access each item in a table. But take note, tables can become incredibly complex, incredibly fast. So I always recommend to, when you use a table, not 
add too many items into the table. As in, don't add three or four tables inside of one table here. So this right here is already very complex. If I were to go here and I were to add another table here. So now I were to add another table of more values. Then it will be more complex because now it's not no longer X, Y, and Z. It has started to go into complexity where X should now be shifted to something else. I'm just going to move this here to the front. And we can just put an A here for now. So I would say always follow the X, Y, Z rule. This is the complexity rule where you don't have more than three tables inside of one another. If it becomes more than three, it becomes very difficult to not only manage, but to work with. So I'd always say try and stick with three or less tables. So here there are three tables. If you were to remove this like that, then there are three tables. So this table here, this table here, and this table here. So unless you have specifically named items like an object, which we'll be getting to, then never go past the XYZ complexity in a table. Usually just try and keep it as simple as possible. Then you also have one, two, three, if we were to go like that. Now let's say we want to convert this into a piece of text. Well, we can go print table.concat and this will basically join a table of all of its elements depending on the separator you give it. For example, if we pass in nums2 or nums and we pass in a space, then it will print it out with just spaces between each item. This here is now a string. Take note, this is a piece of text. And you can replace this with anything. So it can be a semicolon, another number. So dash, dash, dash will work and so on. And then finally for named items inside of tables, and we'll get more deeper into this, but for named items, you can go local TBL. And here we can do something like name is equal to Mike and then age is equal to 12. Now if we go TBL at index one and we print that, then we get nil. But if we go TBL and then name, we get Mike. So this is a named table. Some people also see it as a dictionary or an object. And yeah, that those are the basics of tables. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next tutorial.